Hello, I am here with Rebecca Kopisinski. How are you? I am excellent, how are you? I'm doing great. Um, I know you're doing well because I see your, your project that you have over at Bow Market, the ThoughtBot Implantation Center. I see it everywhere. I see flyers attached to telephone poles every time I'm walking around Somerville and Cambridge. Um, I open Dig Boston and there you are. I, I go to Vanya Land and there's, there's uh, another article about this. So we knew we had to get you in here to talk about thought, the ThoughtBot Implantation Center. I, I keep looking down because I want to make sure I get it right, <laughs> uh, which is over at Bow Market. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's been there, uh, we're in mid-January now. It's been there all of January. It's going to be there through January. Let's talk about ThoughtBot Implantation Center. How did that come about? I can't actually remember when I invented ThoughtBot, but this entire project began um, after a performance I did in 2015. Uh, where I mixed live music, video, and kind of acting, as I call it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was part of a, um, a larger, one-night-only, uh, multimedia collaborative project put on by experimental theater company Liars and Believers. So after that show, I said, well, that was really fun, that format, those three things together. I think I want to create a full-length show um, and that basically brought me to this point where I have created a very sort of elaborate and sprawling dystopian story world. <laughs> and uh, within that story world, uh, you know, one of the main things is ThoughtBot, which is a brain implant that algorithmically applies points to your thoughts. And those points accumulate, they're called value. And everybody does this because the more value you have, the better redemption you get. Um, Within this story world, there are basically several episodes. Um, and through each episode is one protagonist, Reagan Estermeyer, which is a character that I play. Um, so Reagan, like everyone else, has this government-mandated brain implant. But the first episode that I mounted was a, a multimedia play, I guess you could say, or multimedia musical, which you know was my sort of vision from, from that February 2015 show. It was you know, me on stage, interacting with video, playing music, and sort of telling this story about this, this gal who lives alone in a mall and sings with her mannequins <laughs> with a glitched thought bot. So that's all just like, you know, basic information that you get. So it, to promote that show, I, was put up a, I put up a lot of these posters. Is your thought bot glitched? You've probably seen these oh, yeah, all seen over them. Somerville, <laughs> Cambridge, and Boston because I've now done three different spates of putting them up for two, the two months leading up. I had a workshop performance of Reagan Estermeyer in January 2018. I did an actual four date run this past June 2019. Um, and then I put them up again for the ThoughtBot Implantation Center. So what I do is I look on like Wednesday, I go and I say, where are things happening this weekend? And then on Friday, I walk eight, or 12, eight to 12 miles, <laughs> depending <laughs> on the day taking the train and hitting these neighborhoods and putting these posters up where I think people are going to see them. That's smart. Yeah, and to this date, or well, I didn't check this morning, but at last I checked, which was maybe last week when I was answering the questions for the dig, this website that it kicks you to after you take the glitch test, it brings you to the homepage, thoughtbot.me, um, has had like 9,000 visitors. Wow. So y'all like these posters because <laughs> they're working. Um, so what is a glitched thoughtbot? Well, now with ThoughtBot, the way that ThoughtBot uh, operates on you is yeah. that once implanted, the ThoughtBot essentially, I did a lot of research into like neuroscience because I'm really actually very fascinated by the brain and the way that we are always kind of reshaping our brains through thought and action, neuroplasticity. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's a very cool concept about how we're constantly changing our brains. They're like Play-Doh. Mm. Um, so, uh, the ThoughtBot acts in your limbic system, which is where your memory and your emotion centers are. So one, there's ultra-pure selective memory reconfiguration technology. <laughs> <laughs> and that targets your harmful memories. Um, and then there's tranquility, which is like an emotional meh, zombifier. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it inhibits you from kind of forming relationships and it makes you forget the past, essentially. Mm. And I should mention that this government, the ultra, is a totalitarian. Joe, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I just did. Um, 
Um, I started writing this story during the 2016 primaries, and I was like, what if worst case scenario happened, and then everything terrible about our society got blown out to the nth degree, climate change, uh, racism, misogyny, class disparity, and so that's really what my world is based upon. Um, so a glitched thought bot is essentially anyone who feels, <laughs> anyone who, uh, you know, values relationships, anyone who listens to music. I mean, basically, if you're not just a government drone saying, you know, I live to serve the ultra, then yeah. your thought bot is glitched. Yeah. So this came about because Reagan Esther Meyer, the protagonist, it's, you know, sort of the um, outlay of the story, the, you know, the premise of her story is that she is isolated in this mall, working a government job, but because she's isolated and she sort of figured out that she was glitched, like she's basically glitched, but she's hiding it because she's isolated. So there's like that sort of push and pull um, mm -hmm. between her and the government. And you know, then um, someone, another character comes in and it's like, do I trust this person? Do I form a relationship? Because you know, the government's always making everybody paranoid about everybody else. Um, so after that show in June, um, I thought, Gee, the thought, because this t takes you to the website that's for the ThoughtBot Implantation Center. I yeah. thought, the ThoughtBot Implantation Center should be a place. This will be the next episode in my story world, an immersive and interactive installation where you can go and you can step into my world as if you're going to the ThoughtBot Implantation Center to either be implanted for the first time or to be you know, rebooted or tweaked. Um, and then just serendipitously, I, I met someone who has a store in Beaumarket, LA. Horianopolis, who has, runs 9,000 things, and I told her about this. You know, we were just chatting about what we do in life. She's like, Bull Market has stores for just this reason. And <laughs> there I am. So Very cool. Yeah, the night, it, the, the experience itself is, like I said, an immersive in, interactive installation for about 45 minutes, a sort of self-directed experience. And then there's an intermission because I have to reconfigure this very small space into a concert space. And then I just play all the music from the show. Uh, interspersed with Reagan Estermeyer backstory. So if mm. you saw this, the multimedia play, musical, whatever, I still haven't decided what I'm calling that big yeah. show, um, then this is her backstory. If you haven't seen the show, then this is actually meant to be the, your first experience with the entire thing. Right. So the thing about this sort of story world, um, I learned that they're kind of called transmedia narratives, when you create a world and then you create lots of stories and experiences within it. Oh, like world, I've heard world building. World, so it's like, yeah, world building. Yeah. So then I'm like sort of creating episodes within this world. Like, you know, next this year, I'm creating a 90s style JRPG video game that takes the, where you get to be Reagan Estermeyer walking around this messed up world, you know? Wow. So, each one of these things, though they complement each other and support each other, they are designed to stand alone so that yeah. you don't need any prior knowledge. You can walk into any one of these things and have a great time, be told a great story, uh, you know, laugh, cry, be confused yeah. <laughs> without yeah. having to know anything else. But if you're the kind of person that wants to go deep, oh, you can go deep. And you know, I have so many other plans for like other websites, maybe a podcast, Netflix limited series. Like, <laughs> come it's on, funny. Netflix. I, I, I just, I just got in my head of like a video on demand series, as yeah. you said, like jumping in at any point. Yeah. And then, you know, wherever wherever that story is, and then it makes you curious enough to see what the backstory sure. is and yeah. see the previous yeah. episodes. People have liked this little backstory thing, and for people that are brand new, they're like, oh, I want to know what happens to her next. And, you know, people who haven't seen, you know, the next sort of. If, if you're talking about Reagan's story chronologically, the stage show would be the next thing, so yeah. people want to know. But they're all, like I said, meant to be independent, and, which is, in a way, kind of um, cool because I feel like, you know, there's some people who like theater that maybe don't want to go to an interactive thing, mm -hmm. who maybe don't play a video game, or people play a video game. So, you know, you're sort of tapping into different markets yeah. um, and pulling people in. But I have all sorts of ideas. Even something as simple as, like, classified documents, you know, the, the ultras, the governments, like, classified ultra documents in a filing box at the Somerville Public Library, and you have to, like, go to the library to, like, get the file That's box, cool. you know? So, or like, they're, they're down for that. Yeah, or, like, <laughs> send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I'll, like, send you some something, like, something you know what I mean? Yeah. So for people that really want to go deep, like I have plans. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, that's fun. Plans. It's funny you should mention the filing cabinet because I was on your website oh, yeah. looking at, at what the experience might be like. And you mm -hmm. mentioned that um, part of the experience is brochures and propaganda, mm -hmm. video, audio, and neon. 
Got to have wanna, neon. I want to talk about the neon. Yes. Uh, a public <laughs> computer for taking the glitch test. Oh, never, never did that one. <laughs> that <laughs> one right, didn't scratch. make it. Well, you know what? I might in the future. There's actually no space in, in there, and I didn't never. I'm a scavenger, and I never found the kind of computer that would aesthetically match the era. I kind of. Yeah. I'm shooting for, which is like 85, 95. Mm. So like, like an Apple IIe, Apple IIc, something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like the, f yeah, Apple IIgs, I think, was the first computer I ever used. Oh, yeah. Right. Apple IIc, right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> intake forms. Yep. And files to be perused. Oh, yes. Um, okay, so, so that changed a little bit, actually. Yeah. I have to update my website, huh? <laughs> um, so the, the files to be perused actually turned into a contraband cabinet. Okay. So contraband is actually a sort of a theme in Reagan Esther Meyer, the stage show. Uh, so I decided, you know, contraband. This is in a, you know, in a sort of Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit 451 kind of way. There's like no pre-impact media. Impact is the sort of apocalyptic event that's happened in this world, um, and it's not necessarily what it may seem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, contraband is like any pre-impact media essentially. But the rules are anything that. Uh, provokes an emotion or evokes a memory because remember emotions and memories not good not good yeah so i have this uh filing cabinet that's chock full of actual confiscated contraband proven to cause thoughtbot operating system glitches that's the term you know the oh wow i listen to this video every night so it's like all very burned into my brain um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um so well, this is some examples of stuff in there you know Movies, Thelma and Louise, for example, that's like, you know, depictions of uh, autonomy or rebellion. Um, there's other movies like Network, which was, uh, do you know that film yeah. Network? That was yeah. like a big um, I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to yeah. take it anymore. So that's another like sort of rebellion themes of autonomy. There's, um, oh, I found all these really awesome old postcards. So that's depictions of travel, leisure, or general merriment because there's no real travel in this world. There's no petroleum, like all the whole climate is screwed up. You either live in the, in the plateau where it's just constant fires burning or you live in the valley where it's just rain and flooding all the time. Mm -hmm. so How far out into the future is this? Or is this linear time not even a Linear time a is thing? kind of not a thing. So the sort of time aesthetic is like, you know, 85, 95. I have, you know, like magazines and newspapers from like the 60s and 70s. It's clearly like, What's happened to our world? It's a speculative future because right. you know you you know I talk about the East Coast, you know I say that I worked in an electronics store called Leechmere, <laughs> you know like there's yeah. there's like placement, but you know it's retro futuristic in a way. And as I was developing it, I thought I don't really want to put an exact date on it because if you look at the social issues, or if you think about if I think about the social issues that are you know I'm sort of addressing in this. They've been around for a long, you know. They've been mm -hmm. around for a long time. And they're still here. You know what I mean? I was just listening to a story last night about like modern day slavery and just you know like s human trafficking. And I'm like, you know, like a lot of things haven't changed. They've just yeah. been they've been like disguised and redesigned in right. a way. So I didn't, I, I did want it to be in the aesthetic of the 80s and 90s because I personally love that. Like you know what I mean? It's, yeah. That's sort of like just what my vibes are. But it was also in a way of like not really being able to pinpoint when this may have happened, mm -hmm. you know. So in that way, the timing is a little ambiguous. Yeah. 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 It's it's uh, funny you should mention slave like or not funny that you mentioned yeah, you slavery, did. but uh, <laughs> yeah, I understood. But slavery was in the service of capitalism, and because capitalism is still around, then it makes sense that forms of slavery would still be around. Oh gosh, there's so many stories I haven't told in this world yet. Um, for example, there's a whole class of people where their job is an ultra womb, and you're in, you know, when the, I think this is a little Handmaid's Tale, you know, I do, as with any sort of like dystopian sci-fi thing, you know, you just like kind of touch on the yeah, tropes. Yeah, you're pulling different. Remix yeah. them together. Exactly, but exactly. There's an ultra womb uh, job, essentially, but you're, you become property of the ultra, and like, you know, if you you become not useful in that realm, you know, uh, then, you know, you might be detained and your mm. options discussed with you, <laughs> which yeah. is sort of the, the verbiage I use whenever there's something like, oh, you're maybe not someone who's going to stay here. Or it's like, um, where are all the people of color? Yeah. Everybody in this world so far is kind of white. So, and mm. then in this side tease a little bit when in Reagan's intake interview, because when you go to, you know, the, 
you don't actually have an intake interview when you go to the Thought Body Implantation Center, but it's implied. And so when you see the video of Reagan and her backstory, it's her first intake interview. So they're like, they ask her about her, her ethnic background, and she's like, why? Like, you're just giving me a brain implant. Why does that matter? You know, so there's some teasing for stories that are going to be told in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's definitely some modern day slavery in here. I mean, they, this government is terrible. You know, that's that's kind of what I try to get across is that. And man, it's not it's not that far from the truth. I mean, value and like Thapa and building your value. Have you ever heard of like China's social credit score? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, you have to look this up, it's so terrifying. But like it, the way that China's starting to sort of evaluate their citizens and you know, if, if your value, you know, if your social credit score is higher, which is, you know, being very obedient to, you know, the way the government wants you to be, then you, you, you know, have access to credit or something. There was something about like flying, you get through the airport fast, but it's just. It's the thought bot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds a little like the thought bot. Uh, and, uh, I am reading a book on Chernobyl, the Chernobyl disaster oh, right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And um, as you described this this sort of ultra government, mm -hmm. it, it kind of was Soviet era uh, Russia. Um, and a lot of how the Chernobyl disaster happened was because people were afraid to speak up within this really tightly controlled um, uh, system of communism that you, if somebody above you told you to do something and you knew it was wrong and you knew the data was uh, saying I should do something else, you still had to do it because right? yeah. because of the hierarchy that was in place. Yeah, you might get eradicated. Yeah, which is like the terminology I use in my world. But in you know, because of impact, which you know the ultra says was a giant meteor that hit the earth, but. You might you may find out differently if you see the Reagan Estremeyer show. <laughs> um, life is terrible. I mean, like I said, you're either in the you know the watery place, you're in the fireplace, um, and you get rations. There's no goods manufacture. Like petroleum has been exhausted. There's no travel. You know, you are at the mercy of whatever this government provides to you. Mm. And the only way to get f ahead in life is to build your value and seek redemption. And the funny thing is that you don't actually know what your value number is. That's classified. You just have to like act with faith. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, one of the brochures in the, in the implantation center is, you know, FAPA and me and value. And another one is value and redemption. And inside it sort of tells you what the levels, uh, the, I think it's, I, I called it the stages of redemption. Yeah. So like if you're in a certain number, you get, you know, the, the most basic is money. And, you know, I imply that a lot of people get stuck in the cycle of adding value and redeeming and adding value and redeeming because they need money to go to Crazy Ed's Redemption Center to get, you know, a fire suit or whatever. So a lot of people never really ri r rise in the ranks because they're just trying to get by, mm. which sounds pretty familiar, right? Yeah. Does, um, it, does your world have a name? No, not yet. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know. So I've been calling it the Reaganverse because, like, Reagan Estermeyer is one. And there's, like, some interesting political connotations. I didn't yeah. actually mean for that to happen. I really thought Reagan, like, she rules her own domain type mm. deal. But, um, just, I mean, yeah, but you I can't just avoid those political connotations, yeah, especially you when you're when you're when you're using... based in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, I, yeah totally. And I, it's, <laughs> kind of, it's kind of fitting, but it, it wasn't really intentional. It, yeah. it, additionally, when like um, Reagan Estermeyer shortened, I call it REM, like REM sleep. Mm. And sleep is now, big, uh, re I've, I've, I've always thought for a while, like REM sleep is a really cool thing because your body is paralyzed, but your mind is like just as active as it is when you're awake. And I just really like that paradox. They actually call it paradoxical sleep. And so in the video game, sleep is going to become an important thing. You know, when, when Reagan sleeps, things are going to happen. Done, done a little bit of foreshadowing about dreaming. In this, uh, in the video that's happening in the Thought Body Implantation Center. So, like I said, they all tie together, and you can pick things up. Like, there's one little plant in the video in the Thought Body Implantation Center that calls back to the multimedia show, and only one person so far has been like, "That's that character, right?" <laughs> you know, it's just an audio recording, and they kind of. And I was like, "Yes, you're the first one to figure that." Audiences out. Audiences love to pick up on those those little cues. There's a lot, yeah. and because I'm so deep in this world, it all just comes so naturally now. When yeah. I'm like writing something, it's like. You know, when I first started, it was like, okay, this is, I have to go to that. And now it's just like I'm so deep into it that I can easily make those connections. And um, it's fun when other people pick up on them. You know, it's yeah. like it's really nice to have all these people come into, like, step into this world that I've been living in in my brain for all this time and then enjoy it. 
you know, it's like suddenly I'm like not totally alone in this like weird little world, um, which is funny because Reagan is very isolated in her world. There's a lot of like interesting parallels to it. <laughs> it's like I've, my, I don't know, we'll not go into that. So the ThoughtBot Implantation Center itself, it, there's a waiting list for people to, to yes. want to visit it. It's that popular. Yes, yeah, so it opened on January 2nd. Um, there were 16 shows in the initial run in January. Those were sold out by January 3rd, <laughs> wow. which is wild. And um, there are a few dates at the end of January that I want to open up the last week, like the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of January. But I'm waiting to make sure we don't get any huge snowstorms. Like I want to be able to reschedule, you know, if I have to cancel any because of weather. So, yeah. you know, next Sunday, maybe like the 20th is when I'll announce more shows. But I have asked Bow Market if I can potentially extend another month. So I'm in what they are calling the gap space, Get Artists Paid. And it's a new initiative they're doing. Um, I believe they got some funding to, to um, provide this space free of charge to artists to do exactly what I'm doing. You know, like do, do, make a new thing or whatever, you know. Activate the space. I hate that word in, the in market speak. Yeah, activating so, the space. Yeah, I'm, so I've asked if I can extend. I think they do have artists coming in, but um, they have some other spaces. So perhaps I'll be able to um, get all of these people on the waiting list in because there are quite a few. I think you know the neon sign that hangs in the window, which I had made at Neon Williams, which is right over here on Joy Street. Mm -hmm. um, is just catching people's eye. And I have a note on the door that says, you know, this is totally sold out, but get on the waiting list. So I think there's like a psychology Very there, cool. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as far as getting in, people are just like, what is this? There's all these old TVs, there's like VHS tapes screwed into the wall, like what is happening here? And if it was if it was in a traditional gallery space, people would know right away, like, oh, right. this is installation, yes. I get it. But because it's in a retail space, yeah, it's, it's it's an unexpected it's spot, and I always did want it to be in a storefront, not necessarily a gallery. Like I come from a music background, yeah. so I don't come from like an art world background at all. So none of that is really you know my domain. Yeah, I I, I had always said before this like I need, I want to have a storefront gal like a storefront installation, storefront installation, storefront installation. That's what I was calling it, you know, and that's what what it ended up being. And I think also too, Bow Market has incredible foot traffic. You know what I mean? It's just, especially this past weekend, it was so warm. Mm. Saturday and Sunday, that place was hopping. And I was getting waitlist emails like several an hour, um, which was blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on this project for so long. And well, this that's is rewarding. just blowing my mind that this is, yeah. it's finally, you know, especially you spend so, I spend so much time creating this and you're like, I don't even know if people are gonna like this weird thing. And now it's such a pleasure having just 12 people in an audience because I can really interact with everyone. And I feel like I'm getting a really honest uh, look at how people, you know, wh what the experience is like. And I'm seeing that people are enjoying it, you know, and they're not just like putting on a smile because I'm right in front of their face. Like it's right. clear that people are truly enjoying the entire thing, like from new people to people that have been on the journey with me. Um, Do you customize it for different audiences or, or every audience gets the same experience? Every audience gets the same experience. Yeah. Um, I guess that's how it would be, have to be in the ThoughtBot universe, in the Reaganverse. Yeah, well in yeah. the, yeah, I've been calling it the Reaganverse. I thought also that it could be like the ThoughtBot story world. But um, no, everyone gets the same thing, you know, my from my blue collar from Lowell family who all came on one day and I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh. That's so awesome. They liked that's it. so great. <laughs> they liked it. Um, you know, down to like my hardcore weirdo art friends yeah. who are, you know, expecting the weirdest, like every, yeah, it's all the same. Because during the waiting room part, the only person that's in there with you is the ultra tech, who is just a tacit, white clad, mirror shield on the face being, who is just there to make sure, you know, your cassette tapes don't get eaten by the machine <laughs> and, you know. If a v VHS breaks, a, v a VCR breaks, you know, just switch it out, mm. whoever that person is. <laughs> Who could it be? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, uh, is there anything else you'd like to, to plug or, or let us know about, um, either, either with this project or with uh, projects you have on the slate for the rest of the year? Well, I'm just, I'm going to start after, I mean, I think what's going to have to happen is that I, I will have to continue putting this show up, this installation up. If you know, I still have a waitlist. If I don't get to extend, if I still have a waitlist, I'm going to try to find another place to put it up, um, and then potentially in other places over the year. And then it probably makes sense to do the multimedia play 
in October or November. So I'll probably produce Reagan Esther Meyer again. So what I would suggest is following me on Instagram, which is Reagan Esther Meyer, R-E-A-G-I-N-E-S-T-H-E-R-M-Y-E-R. Um, or, and if you want to be on the wait list, you can email getthoughtbot at gmail.com, and that's get, T-H-O-T-B-O-T, -T -T, at gmail.com. Um, and yes, I do know that a thought is something else, and I didn't know that until like at least a year after I <laughs> to thought but I was like, that could really help, really? I mean, it's like a recognizable term. Yeah. Hey. But some people have thought that it's not a brain implant. I mean, you know, like it's at other things, like, what is this? I've seen, you know, people like taking pictures in front of the sign. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can tell that people are getting some other connotations from it, but that's fine by me. Yeah. yeah. Why not? It all works. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Rebecca, for coming in. It's been um, a pleasure. And yeah, seek out the ThoughtBot Implantation Center if you're in the Bow Market area. I'm sure if you're in Somerville or Cambridge, I've seen these, or Boston, you've you've seen those on on um, on poles. Snatch off one of those little tear off um, parts and and. Because you're probably glitched. Yeah, you're probably glitched.